right. Can you guys hear me? Let me do a mic check. Hello, hello, hello. Can you guys hear me? Let me know if you guys can hear me. Yes, yes. All right. <laughs> okay, guys. So I want to welcome everyone that is here. And we have our guest today. Um, a little bit that I got information. He will tell you more about himself. Um, but let me introduce Mohammed. His name is Mohammed Amara. He is originally from Morocco. He's a Moroccan citizen, but currently he is in Sweden. And uh, what I saw on Twitter was that uh, he is um, he is having some trouble in Sweden. And uh, so I'm gonna let him explain this to you. So there was a big uproar on Twitter about this. So let's uh, meet Mohammed. Hi, Mohammed. Hello, Mahdis. Thank you for having me. Thank How? You so I'm uh, I'm doing uh, all right considering the circumstances. Yeah. So yeah. let's start by uh, telling everybody what's your name, where you're from. Um, you know a little bit of background about you. Uh, I'm uh, Muhammad Amara. Uh, I'm uh, from Morocco, and uh, uh, I uh, grew up like uh, most Moroccans, uh, conservative Muslim, Sunni Malik Muslim. And uh, during my late teenage years, I, uh, I, I left the religion after uh, examining uh, my, my uh, belief system at that time and uh, fact checking it, basically. And of course, uh, Morocco, as you might already know, is a Muslim majority country with uh, an absolute majority of uh, above 95%. And uh, Islam is the state's religion, etc. And uh, I, at some point, uh, back when I was in Morocco, in the uh, two, some two years and a half ago, I got in trouble because of uh, the uh, because of simply be uh, of my existence, because of expressing who I am, and uh, just uh, casually expressing my beliefs on uh, the religion of Islam. Okay, and, no, uh, I have a, sorry, I have a question. Uh, Morocco, is that like Sharia law or are they somewhat, um, somewhat dem democratic? Like what, what is up there? What laws uh, is to follow? Yeah, it, it is definitely not democratic. Uh, it has a, a monarchy, like a proper monarchy, a, a king that actually rules. So in a way, oh, okay. it is even worse, uh, like politically, than countries like Pakistan, meaning that you cannot change the ruler except if you kill the king, for example. Or uh, so it is a, a traditional monarchy. On paper, it's recently they changed this into saying it's a constitutional monarchy, but the constitution was drafted and uh, agreed upon in the palace, in the Moroccan palace. And of course, there, there, the, it, 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 there is like a parliament there, but it's just a puppet. It's just for show there. So it is uh, the total opposite of, for example, uh, ceremonial monarchies that uh, they have here in Europe, like uh, the Dutch uh, monarchy or, or the Norwegian monarchy, for example, where it's just ceremonial and uh, nobody takes it seriously. Uh, and and uh, also the king of Morocco is considered to be the commander of the faithful and a descendant of Prophet Muhammad. So there is a religion claim to the throne there. So this is sounds like a little bit of a Game of Thrones in real life. Mm -hmm. So that's what go, what's going on over there. Uh, in terms of a legal system, uh, Morocco, for example, uh, abolished the death penalty for apostasy. However, there's mm -hmm. still, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but there is still blasphemy laws, which can be easily used against you. And uh, back to the death penalty for apostasy. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the highest uh, uh, religious body in the country issued a fatwa back in 2013 and said that apostates must be killed. And then they changed their minds in 2017. 
So uh, there's still uh, there a discussion on whether uh, a postis back in Morocco should be killed or just jailed no. or maybe just persecuted in some other way, like exi exile or, or whatever form of persecution. Uh, so um, so you you left like when you were there. So you, what was that one thing that created, you know, because I find like for every ex-Muslim there is, one ayat or one hadith or one thing that's like okay that's it you know that you draw the line somewhere because you hear certain things and you're like uh, then you hear from the apologist you're like maybe it makes sense but then there's something where you're like okay now i cannot take it anymore what was that one point for you uh it's uh, it's very hard to s specify one single point it was more of a gradual process and it was several things uh packed together that uh, led me to conclude that Islam is not the absolute tr truth that I was taught. Uh, like, uh, for example, uh, the, 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 the claims on the natural world, the uh, moral example of Prophet Muhammad, and the issue of the preservation of the Quran, for example. Uh, but the, 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 it's it's very easy for someone in the 21st century to see the problems with the Quran on its natural yeah. claims, like uh, claiming that uh, the, 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 what's it called, the thing that comes from the sky and hits, uh, I, I Meteors. forgot. It. It, it, Meteors, Meteors, yeah. yeah, they, they yeah. hit the devil and, they... and uh, <laughs> in the gym, uh, you know, yeah. it's, things like that. It's like yeah. we, we can see into outer space we can see other galaxies but we can't uh, i i mean it's obviously that that was it, the product of its time and then you have like certain uh, like a, like concrete uh, indications or strong indications that prophet muhammad used the religion for his own benefit yeah like uh, settling his dispute with his wives with uh with, with, with the the verse on uh, that that says that Allah can change his wife if they basically don't behave themselves. Mm -hmm. And that was a domestic dispute that he had and yeah. he used the religion. I mean, what that, I mean, really, that's the last word that we have from the most perfect prophet in, in, from the creator of the universe. In that final mm -hmm. world, you put there a verse that, that's about a, 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 a domestic dispute I mean, yeah. really, it's like, what is that going to do to us? Yeah. For me, I just find it very weird that a creator of the universe, whether it is any religion, right? Like whatever religion you pick. And last night I was outside and I was looking in the sky because I've been talking about the universe, the galaxy and the stars and everything. And I was just looking up into the sky and I was like, out of everything, you know, us human could have figured out a lot of things, you know, about sex, about our how we have kids, how, you know, like normal things that we can figure it out. What a human being can't figure out is what's up in the sky, what's in the galaxy, what are the universe? How come none of these gods gave us an answer? Nobody even told us that there's no gravity once you leave Earth. So all these things are mentioned that we don't give a shit about, like how to have sex, how to have sex slaves, how to kill people. This is something we don't need to learn. What we needed to learn, there's no mention of it. If anything, they tell us uh, the earth, earth is flat, which is again, it goes against whatever we figured out now in the 21st century. So I don't know where God's priority were, but they were definitely between girls' pants in girls' pants. Uh, yes, <laughs> he had a hard on for for death and the virgins in, in what, heaven. Sorry to cut you up, but what I was concluding the other day, like, you know, going through all this stuff and um, I'm not the person that has read the whole Quran and stuff. No, I've, I just came to, for me, it was like, something is so old. How do you know that it was true? That that was like the thought in my brain. And then there were religions before that. And then there were people before that. So like my thought process for me, that was the height of it. But I think what I was putting this to conclude, now I'm no like psychiatrist or nothing, but I think when a man, and especially this all happened to Prophet Muhammad in his 40s when he started doing all these things. I think that he was fine in his younger years, but when he became came into his 40s, he became either in, incompetent or he was infertile, where he was not able to reproduce. As we can see that he does not have many 
kids having psychologically affects a man because in those days they were all tribal men and this is my manhood so to show it to other people he came you know this was his way of uh, overcoming his um insecurities you can say right he wanted to show the world look i have so many wives and look i'm a man i can go and kill people and i can rule i think that was a psychologic you know thing behind it for him to feel the man um and meanwhile he messed up everything in between so that's my my thinking you could totally disagree with it but i just yeah. think that his manhood was very much hurt and he reacted to it yeah, and I think there's another theory, I think, that links oh, to his sorry, epilepsy. Oh, epilepsy. is that for my okay. end or...? For yeah, you're end? good now. You're good now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think it is Allah trying to ruin the stream. That's, that's, <laughs> that's his voice. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think there's a, a theory on uh, his uh, epilepsy because, uh, mm -hmm. like, from several Islamic accounts and how he was receiving the revelation it shows that he had sy symptoms of epilepsy yeah. and a possible hypersexual uh, 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 condition and uh, of course he had uh, a lot of power and uh, just like most men in the old days with a lot of power and a lot of influence he uh, basically engage he could get anyone he wanted to to mm -hmm. to uh, and uh, like uh, have sex with them or or, or make them him his uh, his sex slaves or wives etc which mm -hmm. is what happened in the case of muhammad who had several wives and and concubines and so now in your case he you said that you were having doubts when you were as a teenager did you discuss anything with your parents um no. And how did your parents react to it when you told them that you had left the religion? Or did no, you No, I them? never told them that uh, oh, okay. face to face. That conversation never happened because I knew that it would not come up. Uh, it would not have anything positive for me. I mean, we're talking about an extremely conservative society here. And where the law is against you, the society is against you, and your own parents might turn against you. Because religion comes first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And if you say, well, I think that Prophet Muhammad was a pedophile because I think there's strong evidence that he had sex with a nine-year-old and married her when she was six and he was in his early 50s. And this is absolutely not the example of, that we, of the perfect human being or most perfect human being to ever walk on earth. You can't have like those conversations. And uh, uh, I, I, I had that in mind. But at the same time, uh, and, and just to go back a little bit, because uh, because my intention obviously was not to leave Islam. Just I, I didn't start study it to leave it. Uh, it was uh -huh. it, my intention was to become the best Muslim possible, and uh, 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 and, and uh, just uh, become the become the most perfect Muslim possible. So uh, so that was my initial like uh, uh, intention but hmm. it did not go as planned so here but i am it, that's that's how most but of the people good. they become ex-muslim is that they're like oh we're gonna prove them wrong and we're gonna go study and i always tell people i'm like go study your own books um because uh there are people that come to my show and they're not very much educated in pakistan they read everything in arabic they don't understand arabic um they don't know what they're reading but they come here and then this guy was like Oh, I told him, I'm like, do you know it says to beat your wife in Quran? And he's like, no, it doesn't. So when you don't even know what is in your scriptures, um, this is how a lot of people become ex-Muslim because then they're like, this is in our scriptures. Yeah. Uh, and uh, speaking of Arabic, uh, uh, Morocco is a uh, majority Arab-speaking country. I wouldn't call it, call it an Arab country, but it's Arabized like most of North Africa. Mm. Uh, yeah. So uh, that argument of language that you don't know the language, because in the Moroccan school system, you spend around 12 years of basic education from first grade until the 12th grade, like the last year in high school studying, and you have like Arabic in all those years. So even if you are uh, dumb like a rock and you can't learn a language, you will mm -hmm. learn it uh, uh, like uh, by just repetition. Uh, yeah. And uh, when it comes to Islam, the other argument that some people use is that you don't know Arabic well. So 
if you are a non, you don't speak Arabic at all, then you need to learn Arabic to be able to understand the Quran. Yeah. But when you can speak it, you you have to have yeah. a PhD in philo Arabic philology. Uh, <laughs> but you obviously can be uh, ignorant in join Islam. You can't even uh, you can be Ill illiterate in join it. That's the beauty of the. Uh, that's why exactly. that's the thing, right? Like, why would God create something so complicated that a human being can't understand? Because anytime you're like, okay, this verse says this, and they're like, especially the woman beating verse, I've had a lot of conversation with that because that's the one I have a problem with. And even I've seen women apologize for it, you know, being apologists for it. Oh, it is not, you're not reading in the right context. So then my thing is, which context is it okay to hit a woman? Please. And then some guy said self-defense. And I'm like, well, it doesn't say self-defense. So I went and I saw it again, the verse. Now they have put beat her and then it put lightly in the brackets. <laughs> it still doesn't make sense. What context? I, I just don't understand it. It just says in the original version, what they're both home and hit them. That's what it mm -hmm. says. There's no lightly yeah. or strongly there. There's no. no specifics. You just hit them. There's no context. It's written black and white. Yeah. So yeah. They, they go all around it. So, okay, so let's get back to you. So when was it that you left Sweden? Uh, I left it. Uh, I left Sweden. I mean, Morocco, you mean. Uh, I, I left mm. Sorry, yeah. to Sweden uh, in uh, uh, early 2019. So that was uh, two years-ish ago. Okay. So that was like two years, three, four, four months like that um and so uh, you came yeah. as a refugee or you took asylum uh no i i, I flew here because i had a valid schengen visa in my passport that was issued okay. by sweden at that time uh which uh, at that time was not uh, my intention to get a swedish visa and go there and seek asylum i was i was planning on uh, attending a rock concert here because i uh mm -hmm. Uh, I, I I'm a big fan of, uh, of of metal music, and there's there's like a Swedish band here uh, called Ghosts, uh, which is known okay. internationally. Yeah, and uh, at that time uh, I was working in Casablanca, so uh, the travel. You give that look too, the Met Metallica look. You like Metallica? I'm like the old school one, you know, ACDC yeah. and all those. I like those. Yeah. I, I I like them. Those were the the pioneers. Yeah. Of but, course. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, so uh, that, that was like uh, why I had that valid Swedish visa on my passport in the first place. Uh, about some events okay. occurred there where I, I, I basically survived in, like a, an assassination attempt against me, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, of course, uh, the authorities don't do anything there because they're uh, mostly Muslim. It's, uh, the, the law is against you. You don't exist. Uh, atheists don't mm -hmm. even exist in Morocco, and uh, uh, there are no uh, uh, the, the 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 for, there's the 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 count, even the the language used to describe atheists back in Morocco and those who leave Islam, like murtad, murhid, those those terms are charged mm -hmm. with prejudice and hate, and yeah. so even how people talk about. Uh, that demographic, it, it's very hateful. And uh, if you are, if you escape state persecution, because you can see where the police are and because they wear uniforms most of the time and you know the laws, you can try to navigate your way around it. And sometimes it does not work even like that. But you cannot escape the oppression of the, of society. Uh, there's, always that one soldier of Allah out there who's yeah. stupid enough to do something crazy enough to like really hurt you and of mm -hmm. course uh, nobody cares about you if something happens to you because you don't exist even mm -hmm. uh, you're non-existent uh, mm -hmm. so uh, I, I, I left Sweden uh, left Morocco to Sweden and I applied for asylum after I landed here and uh, then uh, it, it took like a few months to assess my case, etc. And then we received the first rejection of the uh, Migration Board of Sweden, which argued that although that I am a former Muslim, ex-Muslim atheist, 
I uh, don't have the need of protection because uh, it's not that bad for uh, Moroccan ex Muslim atheists back in Morocco. Yeah, uh, it, it's not that bad, apparently. Uh, uh, it, it, it's, it, it's, uh, it's not even safe for some uh, former Muslims here in Sweden, in some areas where there are yeah. like conservative the Muslim dominated areas. Uh, but it, of course, became uh, safe. Because Morocco became safe, according to them, after they did some uh, Google Wikipedia research, and and then uh, we apply, uh, we uh, we appealed at the migration court. That is getting stuck. Is it my internet, guys, or is it his internet? Now you're back again. Okay. Okay, I'm back again. Is it my yeah. internet? Okay. okay. Yes. I okay. have no idea, but we're back again. It's... Oh yeah. Uh, so uh, we 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 stopped at the appeal, I think, uh, where where we appealed the decision of the migration court, or, uh, the migration agency at the migration court, and then when uh, Thanks, the the yeah. And when the court, here's where it got very interesting, and it just uh, became uh, quite obvious that they had prejudice against ex-Muslim atheists. And uh, in the judgment of the Swedish Migration Court, they uh, told me the following, among other things. Uh, they argued that the Migration Court is of the opinion that it is reasonable to require from Mohammed Amara that's me, that he, upon return to Morocco, as he claims to have done there, because I have to, like, uh, not, uh, to keep a low profile, in, restrain, in his restraint, in his criticism, criticism against Islam and the monarchy, to avoid provoking acts against him from private individuals in the, and the authorities. In this assessment, the court notes that atheists cannot be considered to have a need to express their views in words or active deeds in the same manner as converts. There is also reason to note that Islam is indeed the official religion of Morocco in previous Moroccan society, etc., etc. Uh, so, uh, that, this is uh, uh, from a uh, court of law, a different court of law here in the humanitarian superpower Sweden. Now I have a question. So in yeah. in Sweden, I remember the uh, heritage or some historic MP was an Afghani guy or something in uh, Sweden, and I know Sweden took a lot of Afghani refugees, right? Um, when the migrants and everything was happening since 2015, they had swarms of people that were coming in. You know, so why are they allowed to be there why are, are they like sending them back because i also heard that they're sending these refugees back now i'm not too sure what's going on but you tell us uh i think there is like a big crisis going on and it's been like because uh, sweden has been like in the last couple of decades i think had like a high intake of asylum applications in general and i think mm -hmm. think in 2015 they had some uh, like 100 60,000, something like that, applications in one year. And this is in a country where the population is uh, around 10 million. So it, mm -hmm. it, it had, in 2015, with Germany and, uh, and Hungary, uh, they had, I think, the highest uh, a, a, a number of asylum applications. They had like around half of the asylum applications that came to the whole European uh, Union of about 27 countries. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, they've had uh, a crisis here and they, they still have it and it's uh, uh, not looking that good for, 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 for anybody. Uh, but in, in my specific case, uh, it's, uh, if that was like an issue, they could have transferred my case to another EU country instead of coming up with the dumb excuses like these. Mm -hmm. They could have just said, well, we have a lot of applications here and we cannot mm -hmm. take yours. Because there's something called the Dublin regulation here in the EU. So it forces you to apply for asylum in the first country of entry 
uh, yeah. since the last time you have left your country when you needed protection. In my case, that country was Sweden, happened to be Sweden. So uh, they did not do any of that and they took my uh, application and they processed it uh, according to that regulation, uh, Dublin regulation. So mm -hmm. they did that and uh, uh, they just kept looking for any excuse to reject it and they, it is, it is, I'm not the only one that this is this has happened to or this is I'm not the only one that this is happening to like a lot of uh, former Muslims who are stuck under the mercy of the Swedish asylum system they get similar reasoning a lot of uh, LGBTQ people from Muslim majority countries mostly and other uh, countries that outlaw homosexuality are told to go and hide their uh, their identity and their lifestyle to, to stay safe E, uh, mm -hmm. e even if there is like a risk of the death penalty if they are discovered so it is and this is it goes against the the the, the guidelines of uh, the UNHCR of uh, the, the UN human rights you cannot but ask a person to go and hide their identity to stay safe otherwise there is no need for asylum law which yeah you can just but that's, the, yeah that's what I don't understand because a lot of these countries have uh, you know, when you're running away from for religion reasons, religious reasons, persecution, because you're not from that religion. So I don't understand how Sweden is not accepting that. Is there nobody in Sweden? Because I know Sweden is a leftist country, you know, big time. And there is this agenda of left people portraying Islam as like peaceful religion. Is there nobody in Sweden that can actually show them what true Islam is? Like, for example, in Canada, uh, four years ago, nobody knew really what Islam was, but even the white Canadians here now know, even they have picked up the Quran and they have started reading and they can quote you the Hadith and they can quote you everything now because they're waking up to this, right? So is there nobody spreading that message in uh, Sweden? I think there's a general ignorance in Sweden regarding Islam. Uh, and uh, there, there's, as you, since you mentioned, the, the dominant uh, Swedish left, which has been dominating uh, the government for several decades in the last 100 years. Uh, uh, the, 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 it, it's really not just a problem on the left. I mean, it's uh, the, the, the both ends of the political spectrum here in Sweden are mm -hmm. polarized and you have the, 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 the radical left who have uh, racism of low expectations and then you have on the other end uh, the radical right who ha are just classic racists. Mm -hmm. They hate how you look and how you speak and how and you should go back to your country. And the yeah. other ones think that you should behave a certain way otherwise you should go back to your country if, yes. if, if you're an Islamophobe <laughs> like me. Yeah. So uh, yes, uh, so we, you, you, it, it's quite a strange situation, and uh, I think former Muslims in Sweden, in general, don't have like a political voice for them. There is no like uh, lobbies for them. Uh, like even some minorities here, like the Muslim minority, uh, have like uh, political lobbies that that uh, that speak for them, that that they defend them, and uh, the the state, I would say, that even terrified of. of Upset in the Islamic feelings, not of the the, 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 the the progressive like Muslims who recognize the problems within the religion and want to change it, but no, they they are terrified of the radicals, of the the, the, the conservative Muslims, the Islamists who get upset if if you try to outlaw, for example, putting headscarves on little girls or things yeah. like that. So uh, the, the, those are terrified of them, and uh, then you have on the other end uh, uh, people who. Uh, uh, are uh, c considered ethno-nationalists who uh, want you out of the country, go back where you came from because you look different. Mm -hmm. You don't have. So, but for you, one. can you now apply? Like, can you apply to other countries? Like, can you apply for something in in Canada? Because I know we take everybody in. <laughs> uh, no, no, yeah. Thank you, uh, thing. Yeah, maybe if I blow something up, that could work. Uh, no, uh, not if you have... Blow uh, something up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, you have to be a little bit uh, mental. And uh, mm. yes, so... Uh, in the case of Sweden, there, 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 there were like uh, people who left the Islamic State, uh, ISIS, and uh, mm -hmm. came back to Sweden either 
uh, who were already Swedish, Swedish citizens and mm -hmm. went there to fight and got back, and those who are foreign citizens and came and took asylum in Sweden and got it. And uh, sometimes they are, uh, and oftentimes are posing threat to people who fought against them. So now they are recognizing the people who fought against them and those ISIS uh, fighters, uh, uh, as per like the media reports that I read, they, they are have like uh, protected identity, etc. So, some cities, I think, like the city of Lund, I think, in in the south. I don't know if they carried out the proposal, but they plan to like start rehabilitating uh, the, the yeah. ISIS fighters. Yes. Uh, yeah, Same exactly. here. So whatever I find, because uh, I've been into, I started in getting into this political thing of Islam in 2017, because that's when they wanted to bring M103 here, which is basically like a blasphemy law. And so people can't talk about Islam. It's Islamophobia and stuff. So that's when I got into it. And I saw the same thing happening, which you're saying. So whatever is happening in Europe, we are just five years behind of it, you know. Uh, whatever is happening in UK, it's coming up here. So exactly what you're saying, that's exactly what is happening in Canada as well. Um, they, our Trudeau wanted to bring in these fighters and rehabilitate, we have, you know, get them to be mixed into this society. We had uh, Omar Khadr. I don't know if you know him. His uh, father was a Taliban. He was caught by the U.S. Army, um, U.S. soldiers. And he got $10 million because he sued our government. Yeah, human rights basis because he was caught by the U.S. Uh, soldiers. He was taken to Guantanamo Bay, and his thing was that the Canadian government didn't help me, and I was tortured. He got ten million dollars. So if you, Muhammad, were you know a terrorist and you were blowing people up, and uh, you know then you would be welcome to Canada, and you would be given ten million dollars. So it's just you're on the wrong side. Yes, we're both I, I on think I have a, yeah, I have a severe case of Islamophobia. I think uh, yeah, we no. both yeah, <laughs> so, very Islamophobic. Um, yes, uh, it, it just boggles my mind. It just because I've been here for twenty five years, and we came here as refugees. And at that time, when people would hear our stories, they would sympathize with us. Twenty five years later, when I tell my story, people call me Islamophobe. So if you were to tell me 25 years ago that, oh, this is what is going to happen, people that you ran away from are going to be here, but they're going to be in the politics and telling you to do the same shit they were telling you to do in your country, I would have said, no, no way. Um, so what is your plan right now? Like, what, what, So what are you doing now with this? Uh, at the moment, we are working on reopening the case here in Sweden to reopen okay. it because we, 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 we asked to reopen it. Uh, uh, at first, because we never got like after the decision of the migration court, we never got a response that details why it is reasonable for me to go back to Morocco and hide in order to stay safe. That's on the assumption that that would work. Now, this is based on the fact that I don't have like a th big threat picture in Morocco on, on the on that premise, which is unfortunately is growing bigger and bigger day after day uh, because i had to speak out i had to make my voice heard because i couldn't just like uh stay silent as they asked me as soon as i read that that judgment i was like these people are really really deranged i mean they are either useful idiots or or, or just don't care about anyone who is non-european atheist from an for muslim background uh, so it, 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 and even here in sweden i there is like a threat picture against me and recently i had to burn a, a copy of the quran uh, on yeah, videotape yeah so they pushed me to do that i mean it's not like something that i had to that, that i like to do i'm against burning books in general mm -hmm. even uh, even if they are uh, the most abhorrent books you can find but they ha i had to do that because they these people asked me to to just die in silence they they obviously don't care yeah. about me it's just another number as you said, they had like a high, high influx, and I don't think that that's just that's because of that, or just because of that. Because the people who are old enough here that have been in Sweden long enough, old enough to and worked, 
closely with the cases of of like uh, people who are fleeing uh, religious and political persecution from uh, from countries like Morocco, like those cases of LGBTQ people, uh, former Muslims, they they've been handled in a similar manner since the 90s like long before they've had like those uh, like the migrant crisis of 2015 uh, mm -hmm. so uh, they've been they win that for a while i think now it's just more visible because there are so many cases now there are like there's a there's a, just like some a decade ago the, the, the uh, i would not have been for example a former muslim if it wasn't for the internet that's where you get like information mm -hmm. that is usual because because if you are surrounded just by an islamic culture islamic uh, books you're you're not gonna get like the full uh, neutral uh, critical sources so the internet helps people so there are more former muslims there are more people fleeing for their lives and in general mm -hmm. there are more uh, asylum seekers around the world and uh, since sweden has had several like many applications in recent years it's more mm -hmm. visible but i don't think that they have uh like uh, been nice or kind in the past and now they just became uh, uh, uh like indifferent about uh, like yeah. this case. i think um uh what i i personally think because these western countries were always big on giving uh religious asylum because i know a lot of people that have come here i know of muslims that have lied about just to come here about their religion or oh, we're being persecuted and blah 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 amadis amadis is a big sect of uh, uh is islam they are here on persecution basis all because they're persecuted against so i don't understand how um swedish government is doing that but i can also see because uh ex-muslim the word ex-muslim has become very much famous in 2020 let's say like since corona came that's when even I heard about it. Before that, it was very few people you would hear about ex-Muslims. Now there's so many channels and stuff. So I don't think the left grasps that, you know, that there's Muslims that can actually leave Islam. And, you know, um, it's very naive of them to think that there is nothing that is going to happen to you. Um, they're just, I guess they're just turning their blind eye to it. But at the same time, Sweden has had problems. They've seen it. They've done a mistake. They know they've taken in a lot of people that are from third world country. They're going to destroy their country. So now they're taking everybody out. And in between them, you're one of the person that is being counted as one of them, even though your situation is totally else. different. It's the people exactly. who have asylum grants. Not everybody yeah. else. I don't see anyone who uh, uh, wants to put bags on little girls out or someone who yeah. came back from ISIS or... Or, uh, yeah, that's like the that. thing. It's no. just not fair. It's just not fair to you. Um, and I, I have no idea. I really don't know what these countries want to become because this is how Afghanistan, because they always tell me, oh, it's never going to happen here. It's never going to happen here. That's what happened in Iran. That's what happened in Afghanistan. Pakistan is changing. Wherever they go, they start changing. And soon, you know, it's Sharia law for everybody in the country. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it might not happen during our lifetime, but uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it did not take overnight. For example, Morocco was not a, did not a, uh, was not a Muslim majority country overnight. It took uh, several years and a lot of uh, peaceful spread of the Islamic religion there. Mm -hmm. uh, they gave a lot of love and peace to the natives there. Uh, mm -hmm. They taxed them to death and treated them like second-class citizens. Sometimes the native population, the Amazigh of Morocco, they were treated, mm -hmm. for example, as second-class citizens even after they converted to Islam because they were always like beneath the white Arab Muslims mm -hmm. who were like a, a, the, a good example or because or, they were in charge. Mm -hmm. as, uh, they, 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 uh, and, and I think that's like the most influential foreign power that has uh, ruled Morocco because uh, Morocco has, has been ruled by foreign powers for, for since forever uh, mm. from the Romans to the Vandals to, 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 to until the, 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 the Arab Muslims came and that's when the most like radical effect happened and where mm. the native languages started dying the uh, religions there started shrinking uh the, 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 the there was christianity and judaism there and some uh, native pagan religions 
and none of that survived mm -hmm. after that no uh, does your and, family yeah. do you talk to your family in morocco at all or do they know what's no. going on with you no no they don't know right not okay. anymore no so you're totally cut off so okay yeah. so let people know how they can help you i will show them your twitter um so i will show you guys his twitter so you can follow him up there and yes yeah, so uh how can people help you how can people like what what can we do to spread this message um yeah. we can't be in sweden but you know whatever we can do online because i believe like there's so many things that are happening online now and that is our way to fight against these people uh, yeah indeed indeed that's true okay let me see um so you're only you haven't made any videos right on um on youtube besides from the two uh no learning the quran no no i haven't had the taking a break to make something that's different yeah. from a process and from for my uh, basic rights yeah, so there is Skeptic Muhammad's uh, Twitter. Do go follow him, everyone, and uh, show your support. Um, this is, uh, I think it's really ridiculous what is happening. So I had an idea for you. Like, I know this is a serious thing, but how about, like, you find um, a Swedish woman, get married to her? All these people are doing it, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, there is so many yeah. ways. Um, well, there was... well uh, fa that counts as family reunification, I think. And I think in the case of someone, according to Migration Law of Sweden, if you are a non-EU citizen, then you have to go back to the country of origin, your country of origin, to apply from apply. there. Yeah, oh. which is impossible in my case, even if that's possible. Even if I find... Uh, uh, yeah. Well, well I, 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 I have a, a, a partner, so... But but that's not possible to to have a family mm. unification uh, and and unless you go back to the where you came from, which is not possible in my case. That which is ridiculous. These people don't understand. They don't want to understand, or they just they, they just don't care. So that's what it is. Mm, no, they do, but I think they just don't. I think they're taking uh, sides with the Islamists because they don't want to offend. They don't. I think basically what it is. They don't want more people that are going to come here and talk against islam right because, yeah, yeah um, there's that yeah yeah absolutely yeah. And this is like what's happening i think in sweden because this is where i have been in the last two years and this is the country that i'm familiar with getting familiar with mm -hmm. i think it's it's either the radical left that's islamophilic or the radical right that hates you because you look different so if you're yeah. you you don't end up under the mercy of someone who thinks you're a filthy Islamophobe who needs to get out of the country, you might end up in someone who mm -hmm. thinks you're a filthy Arab, although you're not an Arab, because everyone outside from yeah. that certain European country is an Arab, as as in the movie The Dictator, all of them are yeah. Arabs outside of the United States. Yeah, so <laughs> something like that, something along those lines. Uh, so uh, if you if it doesn't end up in that the hands of someone uh, a radical left wing activist etc that it ends up on the other end and uh, yeah and if it well, ends up the, in the, yeah I don't find the right wing here in Canada like I've I've been so they're called right wingers but I talk to them they treat me all good you know it's I've been invited yeah. to speak on their platforms and stuff so. I don't know how right wing is um, in Sweden, but I um, believe the whole right wing, the rise of the right wing in Europe right now, it's because of the whole migration and all yeah, these, these people coming in and doing that. And that's the unfortunate part is that when the right wing, the white people, people are going to become me, you, people that are progressive that don't. Fall and assimilate into the system. We're also going to be the target of it, um, uh, yes. even though we shouldn't, yeah. right? In, in, here in Sweden, the, 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 uh, the, the, I'm not talking about the traditional right wing. That's like right wing and econ on economics and certain things. I mean, here in Sweden, the, even the right wing can be considered like left wing in 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 in, in, in the United States. I mean. There aren't like like major right wing parties who are against universal health care, etc. Who want to make it privatized and 
there is not like strong support for things like that. I mean, like mm -hmm. uh, you higher education is tuition free, etc. Like most uh, EU countries. Uh, no, it's it's again it's this specific issue, and now most voters are uh, like specific like one issue voters, so they vote for one issue that they think affects them. And obviously, there are a lot of things to criticize about migration, especially in Sweden. I'm mm -hmm. not a fan of like uh, 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 like minimal vetting or lack of vetting of people who would happily see me that because I I mean that's like quite personal. It affects me personally. It raises my security risk if like uh, a lot of Islamo fascists are are, are, are uh, like uh, protected by the state of Sweden and uh, and mm -hmm. given even uh, higher priority or treated the same way as me because uh, th that's just not right. I mean. Uh, but but here there there is like that. It's, they think people are all the same. It's like people live in Syria. They're all the same. I mean, there's a civil war there. They're obviously not getting along with each other, and it's like a huge mm -hmm. mess. And it's mostly foreign powers supporting the uh, government of Assad, killing Syrians and some other factions. So it's mm -hmm. obviously that not all Syrians are the same. So I'm mean, just giving you an example of a, of a war torn country. And there's also in Sweden like uh, mm -hmm. an over uh, focus on uh, war refugees and not political refugees. Well, but mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I obviously think that war refugees like uh, should get protection, obviously. But uh, it's different. It's a different category. But here in Sweden, they don't differentiate between that because the country yeah. has historically been in the recent years. They've mostly had the war, uh, war refugees uh, like uh, from from. Uh, or refugees from, from like tyrannical regimes like Iran and uh, yeah, and, uh, and then the problem, the problem with the refugees is also that when they come here, they don't assimilate, right? They don't assimilate, and when you come here and you try to change uh, another country's laws and rules and everything, then um, you know, then you have issues. So mm -hmm. people want to help them, but at the same time, like we had refugees come here and they were staying in five star hotels. And they were complaining about food you know like you just came from a war torn country where you were not even getting food you should be glad that you're getting food or they were demanding we want halal food you know yeah. like, it's just yeah. certain things like that then that'll piss me off like that's you know i'm helping asylum. you but then that's, you're <laughs> yeah that's grounds for automatic asylum yeah Th Islamophobe so should be sent back yeah yeah, if this is uh, Skeptic yeah. Muhammad's uh, YouTube channel. You can follow him up here too. Uh, we do need to have more subscribers. So please, everybody, go subscribe, subscribe. Um, I'm sure he will be making more videos. Um, Hopefully, I won't have to burn something else. <laughs> in order to, yeah, just we'll stick to the Quran. Something. That's it. No, no, yeah. just stick to the Quran. No, we don't blow up no, things. No, I um, don't blow up things. Up. I don't even burn we, things. I'm not a fan. I, I, I just had to do that. Yeah. For, you see, that's, yeah. that's the thing. Like, we, we don't want to. Like, for me, I would never, I was never talking about religion and stuff. And me being from Pakistan, just because I wear clothes the way I do, or even if I'm cooking, they will be like, this is haram. You're eating bacon. This is haram. You're wearing this. This is haram. And then it got to a point, it's like, when I'm not bringing religion in into anything, but why are you going to come from Pakistan telling me in Canada what to do? So then I was like, yeah, you want to talk about it? Then I was like, okay, well, let's talk about religion. So we don't want to be violent. We Well, we are not violent, but we don't want to be rush us to that limit that we have no other choice. Uh, yeah, Any yeah. last words, Mohammed? you want to say? Uh... Uh, thank you for watching and uh, thank you for in advance for your support and thank you for having me, Mahalish. Thank you so much. Thank you for no, your I was time. So glad that you came up here. I know we scheduled a few times and I'm sorry. It it's just okay. uh, schedule keeps getting here and there. But uh, no, thank you so much. I hope everything works out for you. Um, anything you need help, do let us know. And we are here to Absolutely. support you. All right, Mohammed. Thank, so thank you so much. All right. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Have a great day. All right, everyone, that was Mohammed uh, from Morocco. Well, he's in Sweden now. So you heard his story. And um, uh, I, I just um, don't understand. Hi, Nipunsani. I don't understand okay, you, what is happening with these Western countries. Like, where is their brain? Where What is going on with you? You guys have sold your countries. Like, you guys are traitors. You, you know, all left does is talk about human lives and of equal rights and this and that but at the same time you guys cannot see 
Like you're blind that you can't see what happens to ex-Muslims in Muslim countries. Like you guys don't know what happens to gays or LGBTQ back home. Like I, I'm just shocked to the ignorance. Very nice of him to come up here. Guys, I am.